Three more paramedic witnesses testified today in the Karen Reed trial with similar story, but with one key difference. This is day three coverage of the Karen Reed trial, and I'm your host, Mike, on Just Legal History. Today was a relatively short day in court, with one person finishing up, one person's full testimony, and another one starting but not finishing up. Tomorrow is going to be a field trip day, so I am not sure how that will work or if they will even show any of the field trip. The three people who testified today were all three members of the Canton Fire Department. Two of them had the same story. They were at the fire station waiting for a call, and several of them were out shoveling snow, and they got the call. So they got in the ambulance or the fire truck and went to 34 Fairview, where they were responding to an unconscious male. They worked on him, John O'Keefe, to see if they could revive him. He was then loaded in the ambulance and taken to Good Samaritan. Two of them said that they heard Karen Reed say, I hit him, I hit him. But let's first start with the cross of Anthony Flametti. Where do you believe you were now? I don't remember. Think you might have been in the ambulance? I don't remember. You testified earlier, and this has been a continuously running video on the top, testified earlier that when you left the screen with that gurney, you got in the ambulance, correct? We headed that way, yes. So, Firefighter Flamati, it's not a trick question. Where did you go when you left the screen? It would have been to either gather equipment or to put the patient in the ambulance. Okay. When did the, what, what equipment did you need to gather? It would have been anything that was left by the patient's side, whether it was a first-hand bag, airway bag, any other equipment, basically. You, you were doing chest compressions. I didn't state that. You didn't say that? I said I did chest compressions at some point. I didn't say I did them continuously throughout the call. So you just put John O'Keefe in the back of the ambulance and went to look for some equipment? Not what I said. Um, so chest compressions were done continually throughout, whether they were done by me or by another provider, I can't tell you specifically. So when you left the screen and John O'Keefe is on the gurney, you're engaged in vital life-saving, a, a vital life-saving endeavor, correct? Yes. yes. That, that had to have been your focus, correct? That was at the time, yes. And you wanted to get him out of the, the, the cold, the weather? Yes. Because it was inclement, it was freezing out, correct? Yes. So you wanted to put him in the ambulance, right? And you wanted to continue CPR because, in your words, you testified on direct examination, you believe that there might be some viability left. Yes. So CPR and life-saving measures were absolutely vital at that point. Yes. You didn't go find equipment. You got in the ambulance, didn't you? Yes. So at this point, you're in the ambulance, correct? At this point, I don't know. You indicated you never got back out of the ambulance. After you got in, correct? I don't believe so, no. Did you see any place in that video where you had any sort of detailed conversation with my client? No. Did you see any place in that video where you engaged my client and said, How'd you get here? What happened? And she said, I hit him. And you said, how'd you hit him? All the, the stuff that she testified earlier to. I didn't see that in the video, no. You indicated. The cross was cutting into the testimony and asking Anthony, where in the video did you have time to hear that from Karen? And he said he did not see himself in the video talking to Karen. Next up was Matthew Kelly who was the driver of the ambulance. His testimony was a little shorter, but he said that he only heard Karen say, is he dead? So a little bit different from the other two. Third up was Katie McLaughlin. She rode in the fire truck to the scene, and it was her job to interact with people to ask some of the basic questions. Let's hear a clip of her interaction with Karen. She's standing next to you when you're at the side of the structure, correct? Yes. And um, what, if any, observations did you sort of initially make as far as her demeanor, or how was she sort of acting when you first started to engage her? She seemed uh, very upset. Very upset. 
And when you say she seemed very upset, what what about her did you observe that made, made you say that? Uh, just her facial expressions. She was just visibly uh, distraught. And so as far as your questions, what, what type of questions are you asking or what type of information are you looking for uh, from this person? Um, so just basic demographic info, uh, who the patient is, his name, his date of birth. Um, and then as far as any more questioning, it's you're trying to gather information that would uh, basically help explain how this person ended up in the scenario that they're in. Uh, so did he have any medical problems? Um, does he take any medications daily? Does he have any allergies to medications? Um, so you're, I was asking those questions. Um, and as you're asking those questions, what, if anything, is the defendant is redoing while you're asking those questions? Uh, she, she answered uh, who the patient was, his birthday. I think she answered the, uh, maybe some of those initial medical questions that I asked. She was, but as I said, she was she's very distraught. She's, she was kind of moving around uh, the scene a little bit. So I was... Uh, like just kind of following her, and then we came to a stop at at one point, and uh, I continued to ask a or I asked one more question. What was that one more question? Uh, so at that point, I asked her if uh, there had been any significant trauma that happened before this. What if anything did she say? So she said, "I hit him." She repeated it. Um, there was a woman standing across from her who I believe at that point said, uh, you're hysterical, you need to calm down, you're hysterical. She repeated, I hit him, and there was a police officer who was in that vicinity kind of with us who replied, you what? She repeated it one more time, um, and that officer then signal to somebody, get Goody down here, which I'm assuming would be the, the sergeant. After that, she then said that she was called to go to the ambulance and didn't hear anything more from Karen. And that was the end of her testimony almost from the day. She will testify in the morning, and after that, there will be a field trip. So did anything change from today's testimony? I don't think so. It added a few more people who, who said Karen hit John, but that defense was was able to provide some doubt. One thing that was brought up was the missing shoe. It seems like people that are defending Karen think that the shoe is a big deal, but it, it was somewhat near the body in the snow. It could have been where the car hit him or he moved around after being hit or a variety of other things. Let me know what you think. I will update you tomorrow on this case and all the others this week. Stay safe out there and let me know if today made any difference in your mind.